We've got a dangerous situation taking place tonight with severe thunderstorms and even tornadoes, and that increases as we head into tomorrow, especially in areas further to the south. We're talking about Kentucky, Missouri, southern Indiana, Illinois, maybe even parts of Ohio, down to Tennessee, and all the way over to the Appalachians. This is wind shear, a bit of a different look. You can see all of that change of wind direction with height that's moving through the Great Lakes. It's bringing the damaging winds. We've had several tornado warnings today across parts of Wisconsin. Tomorrow, that threat shifts, I think, a little bit further to the south. So now we're looking into Missouri also into southern Indiana again and Illinois and really what we're going to be eyeing is the potential for supercells to develop and this is an enhanced area I think of wind shear when you get those thunderstorms developing in this kind of environment as the storms go up they want to rotate right so that's what creates those mesocyclones that's what causes all the rotation and in that lower level of the atmosphere with an increasing low level jet I mean all the ingredients are coming together for quite a few tornadoes and some of them could be on the strong side and some hail let's talk about in the short term for what's left of thursday night into early friday morning this severe weather here continues to lift north that threat I don't think it's over yet. For parts of Michigan, uh, it depends on when you're watching this, but that continues through the evening into the overnight. We've seen strong storms also into parts of Virginia and North Carolina and further south too, a risk of some storms as this front sags off to the south. Your tornado risk the highest up around the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes, but a few tornadoes, certainly not you know, impossible, but not as likely further to the south, also to the west and to the southeast of the main area that we're watching around the Great Lakes. Here is the risk for Friday. Now we have a moderate risk. It's a four out of five. Definitely elevated. Data is looking much stronger this evening, and that's one of the reasons you're seeing the Storm Prediction Center highlight this area. As we move into the yeah, afternoon and evening hours, we could see some giant hail in the order of two, three inches, maybe even bigger if you get a huge storm. And a hatched area for tornado risk now from central Kentucky, southern parts of Ohio, it does include the Cincinnati area, back across southern Indiana and Illinois, Indianapolis, that seems to be about the cutoff line, but it's not going to be the end of the tornado risk. It goes all the way up to Chicago again, heading into Friday, and as far west here along the Mississippi River, and maybe even into parts of northern Arkansas. This is the tornado risk, a high likelihood of damaging winds. Within this area, especially the hatched area, we have a significant risk of seeing damaging winds. Some areas could see winds over 70 miles an hour. And here's the deal. As we move through the overnight, these will be moving east, so they may not weaken that much just because of all of the instability and the wind shear. And heading into Saturday, we're not done with severe weather. It expands to the south. We're watching the west end of our front across Texas, Oklahoma, also Arkansas, and further to the east from New York all the way down into the Carolinas. And, you know, this could also dig into the south, so a few isolated severe storms possible along our front into the deep south as well. Let's time some of these storms out. We've been watching them all afternoon, continuing to lift north through Wisconsin into Minnesota. Now they're moving toward Michigan. Now this could be an interesting squall line once we move into the 9, 10 o'clock hour tonight, moving through southern Michigan. Tornadoes certainly possible with these large hail, gusty winds, and maybe even damaging winds at times. Further to the south, a few strong storms also moving through Indiana, Illinois, and down into Arkansas too. These storms could pulse up. And, you know, once we get into the overnight, these still kind of holding on. Once we move toward 2, 3, 4 a.m., they'll be dropping just to the south of the Ohio River. Now, here's the deal. You may think that just because we move into the overnight that the thunderstorms have moved through and we stabilize the atmosphere, but that's not going to be the case. As this upper-level energy swings east, Heading into Friday afternoon and Friday evening, we'll likely start to see the storms fire up across Missouri. I think you also got to watch what's pinwheeling around this low here on the east side of this. A lot of wind shear, maybe low top thunderstorms, but some of these could drop some hail, some gusty winds, and your tornado threat strongest further to the south as this decent jet streak in the mid-levels between 70 and 90 knots moves through, and that's just going to fuel those really strong thunderstorms. Let's look at the storms a little bit closer here as they move through Michigan tonight, also across parts of Indiana into Ohio into the UP of Michigan. These will generally be weakening all night. They still will retain some of their strength, and I think you've got to watch them too and across, across Ohio once we move past midnight, you know, from Columbus all the way south towards Dayton to Columbus and then into West Virginia, the storms go, and then we start to see some calmer weather overnight. And then look, again, tomorrow, watch these storms as far north. I mean, I think you look all the way up to Green Bay toward Madison, and then eventually into Chicago, again, some of these could pulse up into the afternoon and evening hours. And dare I, I mean, look, maybe a few more strong storms tomorrow night as far north as Michigan. Although, again, the strongest risk is to the south. I want to pop back to this outlook. Again, this area is not in the clear for Friday by any stretch.
All right, let's move a little bit further to the south and let's take a bit of a wider look uh, back, especially across Missouri. There comes your front dropping to the south. It stalls out and now your energy is swinging through in the upper levels as we head into Friday. A few storms rolling through Kentucky and Tennessee. We'll see some cooling with the rain, but the atmosphere will recharge pretty quickly with some sunshine. That's going to be the bad news. And the NAM 3K is trying to hold off on some of the storms across Missouri. Although, I still think you watch this area. It's a very explosive environment. And then, boom, here come the storms firing up as we head into the evening hours. Some of these could be discrete, moving off on their own. So supercells forming. And that's, again, the ingredients are there. We're seeing helicity tracks showing up on some of the models. So not just damaging winds, but tornadoes that could exceed EF2 strength have a way to be weather aware not just tonight but also tomorrow night and even into saturday these could hold some strength too as they approach the appalachians late in the night early saturday morning towards 4 5 6 a.m moving through west virginia eastern kentucky southwest virginia finally they weaken but now we're looking along the east coast for these to fire up again heading into the afternoon and evening hours of saturday as our front really just kind of stalls out. And here's a closer look at the storms toward Missouri, back into West Kentucky and Tennessee. Again, a few storms possible on Friday morning, but the big show, I think, is going to be heading into Friday evening, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, especially here into Western Kentucky, Tennessee, and to Southern Indiana and Illinois. These will likely start to line up, and now you're dealing with bowing segments as that dry air pushes in on the backside of these thunderstorms, pushing that bowing segment up forward. So damaging winds become the primary threat once we move through the ocean overnight and then these push off to the south as we head into uh into the overnight so uh, mississippi down into alabama into georgia early saturday morning some rumbles of thunder possible these will be weakening though as they head south and then we'll see more showers and storms along our stalled front heading into saturday as these storms push east friday night into early saturday morning some of them could hold some strength across southern ohio northern kentucky crossing the cumberland plateau dropping south again into Mississippi, Alabama, and then, you know, some of these could hold strength too into parts of West Virginia, heading into early Saturday morning with some heavy downpours, some gusty winds, and even some hail possible. Tornado threat, again, mostly to the west, but it is certainly not a zero threat here, so have a way to keep weather warnings, especially if you are in this hatched area where there is a significant risk of those thunderstorms. All right, let's widen things out and go back to the west, and then we'll look at the rest of the week, also into the weekend cold out here where we're getting mountain snow and then another shot of some chilly air moving in as we head into sunday so snow levels coming down could bring some heavy snow from the wasatch all the way up into the northern rockies this is an interesting look with that chilly may weather on the way i mean not unprecedented in it here but ugh, yeah winter holding strong with mountain snow and valley rains and as we take you through the rest of the week into the weekend there goes our low finally starting to kick out there's the severe weather heading into friday night into saturday the northeast we're going to get some showers and storms moving your way as we head into saturday we are drying out much more quiet across the upper midwest and then across the west showers rain snow here saturday afternoon is also going to bring uh, some showers and storms across texas oklahoma and arkansas and some of these could be on the strong to severe side saturday night into early sunday morning now let's really push this out ahead in time this area of low pressure looks like it wants to develop on the east side of the rockies heading into monday so i gotta wonder with this are we going to see some severe weather propagate to the east ahead of this cold front maybe so something to watch as we bring this dry desert area in this and you got a dry line forming with a lot of moisture around, some instability. So we could be looking at another severe weather event heading into next week. And then this isn't gonna go very far, very fast. Kind of a negatively tilted trough looking here too. So whenever you see that icy wind shear, I see severe weather developing with this type of setup. So let's just uh, watch this over the next couple of days. If you're looking for a weather source here on YouTube, if you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, welcome. I'm Travis, I used to be a chief meteorologist years ago on TV. I've been out of that for a while, but once you're a weather geek like me, you're always a weather geek. So if you're looking for a source on YouTube, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And to the OGs, you've been here for a while. Thanks for coming back. See you next time.